Hi everyone. So I just had some, um, I had a call from the nursery and I had some fantastic news. Small steps at a time. I haven't had much time to create any art because it's just been very challenging um, a week. It's been super, super exhausting. Um, I had to put a lot of hard work into um, together with this nursery. So anyway, I feel very lit up by the positive news and I just want to put it into my art and create something. I only have about, I think about 15 minutes really, uh, so not that much time and I will just kind of share the process with you. So here is the thing, I'm going to get some gesso. I really enjoyed doing it last time. And I want to create a little layout on this page um, <clears throat> next to next to it. And I think I want to create a face, but I'm not entirely sure yet. So what I will do is I will mix a nice kind of uh, dark blue color uh, right here. And I'm going to use the Dr. P.H. Martin's Hydrus uh, watercolors purely because I want to um, just, you know, start using them up. So this is the tallow or tailow, as uh, some of my American friends like to pronounce, um, <clears throat> blue. So I'm going to put two drops in. They're really intense, so make sure you don't put too much from the offset and then I'm going to put some of the black in the um, carbon black no is it yes it is so the color that I'm after is kind of like an indigo so I'm going to put oh that was a bit of a mess now you see the uh, problem with them is that they have this powder that settles in and it clogs up the pipettes as well so not too fond on the product itself but anyways so I'm just going to add a bit more pink uh, sorry pink blue and what's this one here Ultramarine, that's it, that's what I need. There is an ultramarine. Again, I'm going to go in for three drops this time. <clears throat> yes, this is exactly the color. I'm actually not there yet. Uh, a bit more perhaps so yeah um, I hired this um, this lady who I had no idea such a profession exists but when you deal with private schools you uh, find out about all sorts of things and so yeah I had to actually hire someone to go in observe what they're not doing right <laughs> so that they will get tips of how to rectify the situation and i honestly just find the whole thing quite pathetic but um <clears throat> anyway so i'm going to go in and this is actually not indigo this is like a grayish blue but that will do actually so i'm just going to create this base color and some of it has a bit more gray some of it has a bit more blue and that's absolutely fine I do apologize about the sun but um, I just can't get it done otherwise okay so this is it just quite roughly so yeah as I was saying um, the the um, the lady had to go in and this was her morning today I went to see her last night and um, 
already they gave me a call just now and say I can pick up Mason a bit later because it, it became so ridiculous that yesterday the school asked me to actually come in and stay for during the lunch and it was just the most ridiculous thing because <laughs> he was absolutely fine. So I will leave it at this point which doesn't look great but what I'm trying to achieve is basically this look. So first of all I create a dark background which looks quite ugly and then on top I will just go in with white um, gesso and then before it dries I will scribble some areas just for texture and then I will do the illustration but time wise I probably will only start and hopefully later today once I do the school run and pick him up I wonder if you can see anything I hope this is better now the sun keeps coming out and going back in so it's a little bit difficult to film but yeah I was just saying that I will try to um, finish the process once I have picked up Mason and we're back home which hopefully will inspire some of you who don't have that much time and only if, if you have a very limited amount that you can just still do some art and the nappy wipes are the best thing as I have an abundance of them at the moment <clears throat> so I'm just cleaning out the brush to make sure that it doesn't stain the white gesso because I don't want to have like a grayish tone I just want it to be nice and white so when I go here into the gesso I'm just going to pick it up and just go on top and the trick here is to make sure I leave some of these gray areas to pick through so I don't want to cover it completely if that makes sense but the uh, main idea is to just have less of the dark basically at the moment it's a bit like a dark blob and I don't want that so I'm just going to go in you can see there's a bit of color coming from the brush which is fine you can just keep on going over with a bit of gesso like so these edges are a little bit dark because I need to keep in mind that there will be an illustration going on top of this now if I apply something and I think oh I actually preferred the blue so then I can just wipe it like so and just make it come come out again and then again where I want it to be a bit more whiter I'll just blob in some of this white don't just um, use too much or too thickly make sure you don't have too much on your brush and if you do put too much you can just dab it off and that creates a bit of texture as well now while it's still wet what I will do is I will take back of a brush like so and just do a few scribbly bits and pieces like that just so dries fairly fast so you need to work quite fast as well um, okay so that will hopefully add a bit of textural value because I do want the face to go there somewhere I don't want this these scribbles to be right in the middle of the face if that makes sense so I'm just going to smoothen out some of the edges of it and that looks quite good to me actually so I like this blue area here and a few bits and pieces so I'm going to go in and dry it again okay so even after using the uh, heat tool and although the gesso actually the paint um, dries really fast the um, there is still going to be because there's quite a bit of it you know I layered on quite a few coats so because it's quite thick it will naturally take a little bit longer to dry so 
what you need to do at that point is you just need to let it be for maybe five, 10 minutes. And that's great because I need to go now. And so I will um, continue when I'm back. But what is, what's important is, first of all, I won't be able to use this paint once it dries. So it's important to wipe your tools straight away because you don't want to stain them. You don't want the paint to stay there forever. So make sure you wipe and you dispose of all this paint here because it will dry and you know you can't do anything about it. And the other thing is I wouldn't recommend using a plate for acrylics or things like that because you will take it will take you ages to clean it if it dries or whatever you know unless you do it straight away but even then I think it's just easier to use one of those disposable tear off palettes that you can just throw away and that's it and um, very important with the brushes wipe them off before they dry and then uh, go and wash them off straight away with a bit of warm soapy water and that is you know great great way to keep them nice and usable and that's it really okay so i will see you when i'm back a bit later in the afternoon hopefully the lighting situation will be better and we'll continue so it's late in the afternoon we're back from the nursery with fantastic news um the nursery has now confirmed that they will extend mason's hours gradually and it's uh, sounding very uh, positive and I'm just really happy. So if anyone of you is going through something like that, apparently you can hire people to go in and teach a nursery how to be with a toddler. Yes, um, you learn something new every single day. And the gesso has a lovely texture. So it's quite rough to the touch and I really like that. I think the um, acrylics... When you buy them uh, as already, you know, pre-mixed color, I think they have more of a satin touch to them. The The reason I like to mix my own colors with gesso is because basically I can mix colors in abundance. And to be exact, uh, this is how I'm doing it. I'm using, um, well, I'm trying to use up these Dr. P.H. Martin's Hydra's watercolors that I have because I'm not using them otherwise and I like to use my art supplies. So there you go. That's um, my thinking on this part. And like I said, the texture I really love. We're going now. to now move on to the illustration of the face. And for that, I will use, I'm just thinking, I will use a pencil. So there is this Payne's Grey that I quite like, um, but also I've got an Earth Green if I want something more subtle. <coughs> the other grey I have is a Warm Grey 4. That could be a nice light colour. Or I have a very, gray, a very light grey, which is a Warm Grey 2. So you can see the 2 and the 4. Uh, as a comparison, quite a bit of a change. Um, I'm thinking I might not be able to see much of this pencil. So green, I think this olive green would look nice. So I'm just going to uh, roughly sort of sketch out a face. And I want the face to be quite artsy. So I want it to be very, very loose. Um, I think that's about it. I will create some sort of shape for the nose. I think the lips is the only thing that I really want to stand out. So I'll just give the shape here and a little bit of the eye. So that's, I think that should be it. And then the hair. So that's about it. I'm not going to do anything else. I will go in with the pencil, I think, afterwards. But for now, 
I will use the watercolors. I'm going to use my face palette and let's see. So I've got my water here. Gosh, I feel like a ton of weight has gone off my shoulders because it was the peak literally yesterday was a peak day where I just thought I just don't think I can do this anymore <laughs> so it was great to have some sort of resolution so I'm going to go into paints gray um, I love it and again on gesso watercolor behaves differently so I'll try to go into this scribbly bit that I did here and uh, watercolor will look obviously different on that so I'm going to go now into that Daniel Smith Deep Scarlet for the lip. So this is a beautiful red. And I'm just going to leave a highlight there. Okay, so I had to finish kind of um, in my own space and time and I actually quite like it. The eyes is where I was struggling a little bit. Um, so I possibly didn't get them to look um, as expressive as I wanted them to look. But I think all in all, I managed to... Um, put a face illustration together that I quite like actually now it's looking a bit better I'm just going to increase the pupils nope, that was a wrong move but the good thing is that you can so easily correct with um, when you work on gesso that's it that's much better and I want to also add a little bit more of the darkness just underneath like so you can move the color and work with it just as, as you want so you've got loads of space and time to do that in so I will leave it at that and yeah I tried to create some of the um, Conacredon gold kind of um, resemblance to the other page just to keep it a bit more um, livelier and, and something going on in the background so because everything is pretty much the background her face as well I didn't add any color there so I wanted something to pop out um, and I'm quite happy with it. So this area here looks quite good. And then them sort of in a line kind of looks nice. I wonder if I possibly should take this yellow bit out. Let me try and see if I can move it after I have dried it off. Yeah, it seems to be moving still. So I think it looks better without it and that should be it yes now it's perfect 
Okay, so that's my um, gesso experience again and let me know what you think and whether you gave it a go and enjoyed your watercolors on the gesso texture um yeah so that's it thanks for watching and see you soon